We're back now. It's 837 with a journey to one of the most remote places on Earth. NBC's senior investigative and legal correspondent Cynthia McFadden recently traveled to the Amazon. And she traveled with a group of inspiring young Americans. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you know, we talk a lot about the crisis in American health care, but the problem isn't just about how much things cost, but also about the quality of the care, especially for people in underserved communities. Now, many of the country's top medical schools now offer training for their students in places around the globe, programs which often help them train local doctors while giving their students a precious dose of perspective and a desire to come back home and serve in new ways. So we travel to the Amazon with a team of five medical students from UCLA as they learn lessons about themselves and practicing medicine under extreme conditions. In Iquitos, Peru, on the banks of the Amazon, one of the most isolated cities in the world, Molly Sprague and Neda Harati are on a dangerous assignment. A hands-on lesson in their last year of medical school aimed at making them and three of their UCLA classmates better doctors. After every new baby is born, they'd make sure to do a home visit to just check on how things are going. They're here to learn from a medical system that's as fragile as the rickety wooden planks. Usually this is a street. This time of year it floods, 30 feet in some places. They've had to put these planks in. It's, it's challenging. One misstep could mean disaster. Oh. Wow. This board gave way and she went down to her hip. Yeah. Just a little bruised. It's okay. Broken boards aren't the only danger. We have several patients with suspected TB. Malaria, dengue, Zika. Leprosy is also something here. Yikes. Yes. But for the next three weeks, they'll be stripped of many of the tools of modern medicine. This baby was just born about four days ago. Since then, has been kind of sleepy and hasn't been eating very much. Mom is worried. Absolutely. Today, their teacher is Clara, a nurse here for more than 30 years. She instructs the first-time mother how to nurse her baby and how to talk to him. Home visits like these, high on touch, low on tech, are designed to save babies here before it's too late. Still, it's difficult for us not to worry. I can't stop thinking about that baby. It's hard. We are trained throughout medical school to give everything that we can and to come here. It's been a challenge, but also very humbling. This is the largest city in the world that can't be reached by road. In an isolated region that's home to a million people. For half of them, it can be an agonizing journey to reach the hospital, sometimes several weeks by boat. And this is what awaits a crowded, aging, and sweltering hospital, where hallways are littered with broken machinery and people. But the grimmest reality here, the six-bed intensive care unit, where the only respirators reside. It's not for the sickest, but for those with the best chance of surviving. Somebody will die, and somebody will die day in and day out. But Dr. Lee Miller, the dean of students at UCLA's medical school, believes this place can make his students better doctors back home. So he sends some of his best. Diana Pardita, an aspiring pediatrician and the first of her family to go to college. Alex Gorin, with a PhD, he dreams of someday finding cures for infectious diseases. I was expecting to have the resource limitation. It's still very difficult to see it in reality and experience it emotionally. The hospital doesn't have air conditioning. It's extremely hot. You know, there's six patients per room. It's difficult. A.J. Green, a former inner city high school teacher who was convinced by her students to become a surgeon. A lot of us have had patients pass. And no matter how many times that happens, it's hard. Always. It's a person. It's a person's life. It's been tough for the students because the director of the intensive care unit gets to decide who comes in or who doesn't come in based upon chances of survival. And that's just not how we do it at home. It's not how we do it at home, but it's, it is the unfortunate reality of medicine all around the world. A harsh lesson Dr. Miller says he learned himself as the only pediatrician in the refugee camps in Rwanda. That experience inspired him to create Partners for Pediatric Progress, a program that sends some of the school's doctors and students here, where AJ is tending to a woman who just had her gallbladder removed. The local surgeon tells AJ the patient is fine and she should move on, but she doesn't. The team kind of 
left to go on to the next patient. She was very sick. I came up against a wall. The patient hemorrhaged. Had AJ not stayed by her side, she surely would have died. I want them to be comfortable with questioning what they do know, what's necessary, what a patient needs. Dr. Kelsey Martin is the dean of UCLA's medical school. She believes every future doctor should have an experience like this one. I have no question that there'll be better doctors. It changes who they are. It changes how they understand a patient who comes to see them. As we see for ourselves, AJ takes us to meet the patient she refused to walk away from. That is one happy woman. I mean, this is what this whole thing is about, what medicine is about. The look on her face when, when she, she saw, looked at you. Yeah, she just yeah. lit up when she yeah. saw your face. She won't forget you. And you won't forget her. <laughs> there are more lessons to be learned. Remember the newborn baby, Michelle? A few days later, his mother brings him in for a checkup. Hola, Michelle. He's gained at least 100 grams in the last couple days. Excellent. Do you feel relieved? Yeah. He's very happy. All of us feel relieved. <laughs> They are still graduating, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> with, with, with flying colors. Dr. Marina Mud Spray. And they did. Dr. Diana Partida. Dr. Neda Harati. Proud members of UCLA's medical school class. Dr. Alexander Gorin. Of 2019. Dr. Alexandra Justine Elizabeth Green. All with an unbreakable bond. And armed with the intense lessons taught by the people living deep in the Amazon. It was a remarkable oh. experience for all of us, and you can find out more if you're at home and interested in all of this about how to send other young doctors to places like the Amazon. Go to our website at today.com. It's so valuable because obviously it's the need is so great there, but it's so rewarding and important for the students as well. And the need is so great here, too. Yes. I mean, rural hospitals are closing all over this country. We need young doctors who are committed to providing care in these rural and underserved communities with very few resources. You made a great to other medical schools? Yeah. Yeah, other medical schools do it. It's just such an important, and you know, we do, as I said at the beginning, we talk so much about the crisis in healthcare. Here's a way we can really make a difference. You made a good point. I mean, this would seem to be something that should be at every medical school in this country. A lot of them are now doing it, and we have a lot about that on our website. So right. thanks. Thank you, Senator. Yeah. Yeah. It was an incredible story. journey. Thank you.